hopefully I am encouraging you at the very least. Maybe there's a few things you can laugh about. Uh, maybe you just think I ramble and there's no point in watching. Um, either way, I appreciate your visit. Um, so I just got off work. I worked over accidentally because I had, uh, it's the first of the month and you send out all the statement of accounts for all the people who owe you money and then they all respond with, oh, I paid that already or oh, I was intending to pay that or my favorite, they did not get the invoice when the invoice is submitted to the same email that the statement of account is sent to, the statement of account that they just replied to. So, um, yeah. Which they apparently got because they're responding to me. Anyway, so that's my job in a nutshell, just dealing with nonsense all day. Um, but I do feel very lucky. I, I make a pretty good salary. I don't make a great one, though. I, I feel like... There are plenty of people who do accounting and manage money and make a lot more than I do. I should, probably should move, but, um, yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, let's see. I need to get some stuff done at home today. I was going to... I don't want to take down my Christmas tree yet because I need to... I'm... I'm starting my spring cleaning super early as the middle of winter, but I can't stand how messy my house is. And you know, after Christmas you have like tons of extra stuff and you really need to like tear down the stuff that you had before. So I've been watching the show on Netflix. It's, I want to say it's tidying up and that lady has like a, a really good way to go through things. And I was watching her uh, method for pulling all of the clothes, every article of clothing and putting it in a pile. Now I'm a single woman, which means, and I own my own home, which means every closet is my own. And I own two dressers and two nightstands with drawers. And my bed is one of those beds that has drawers at the foot of it that pull out from underneath of it. So if I do that, I have a feeling I'll have a mountain in my living room. I'll have to let you guys see it if I do it. My plan was to do it on Friday, but I'm thinking it's going to take so long, and I already have plans for, like, the whole weekend. Um, so I doubt I'll do it then. So I figure I could start on it tonight and hope that nobody comes over because I imagine it will actually take several days. Um, but... If I'm honest, there are so many things that I don't like. Um, I just got for, you know, who knows? Maybe I found it on sale on a $2 rack. I, I, I don't know. There's so many things I don't like, and right now there are so many things that don't fit me. But that's part of the struggle because I'm the heaviest I've ever been in my life. Um, after knee surgery and not being able to work out and stuff, I put on a bunch of weight. But I still like the clothes from when I was skinnier. And I am now to a point where I can get back in shape and I'm wondering if I get rid of anything or if I get rid of a bunch of stuff and then I do start going to the gym again, then the stuff that I have now obviously will be too big and um, then my old stuff, I, I don't want it to be all gone. So yeah, I'll just have to do the thing like she said, see what things like spark joy, which things like I really felt beautiful in and which things I really loved and then just be willing to let go of everything mediocre into part of part of the great thing about doing that is right now I have so much stuff that getting ready in the morning is so difficult because I can't even find the things that I actually do like uh and because they're in multiple closets and multiple drawers, I can't remember. Like, if, if all the things I currently fit in and all the things that I love were all together and hung nicely and easy to find, then I think I would dress better each day and I would feel better. So, so I might just go home tonight and drag all that out. Uh, and then I already went through my papers once this year right before Christmas and I got rid of like three trash bags of papers but I gotta go through I have a drawer that I throw my mail in um you know I take care of the 
emails and then I write, you know, paid or whatever and my confirmation number on there and then I just throw it in a drawer. But I do have like a filing system where I've got to actually file the bills and then I've got to, um, you know, toss any scrap paper. But I haven't been doing that because the holidays are so freaking crazy. Um, anyway, oh, and guess what? Indiana is so windy right now. I my, I have a screen door on my house, but my screen door, okay, my, my, I have a little porch on the front of my house, and you have to walk to the far side you, of the porch to go in the door, so you walk the whole length of my front porch, and the entrance to my, my, my front door is on the very farthest end of the porch. Um, anyway, but my storm door opens the wrong direction and you have to walk around my storm door um, to come in the house rather than an opening to go out to greet the people so they can come like straight in. Anyway, and it's an old rickety door and I want to change it, but apparently it did not latch all the way yesterday and it was a really windy day and the door was caught by the wind and it swung completely open and it ripped the the um, spring that pulls it closed from the door frame and it hit my exterior light and knocked it off the side of my house. This is the second time this has happened. I fixed the light before and I fixed the spring before and I even adjusted the spring so that it would kind of slam close, not, not gently like, and so that there would be no option for the wind to catch it. So I don't know how how it managed to happen and not be latched this time, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But, um, I want to replace this stupid thing anyway, so I don't think I'll fix it again, because I've only lived in my house a year, and this is already broken twice. And I am very fortunate that where I live in the Midwest, there's a lot of really cool, uh, like, salvage home places uh, that are pretty, about 45 minutes to an hour away. But they have tons of amazing things for your house. You can change out windows, you can change out doors, you can change out all your lights, and, ton of, and tons of the stuff that's in this like salvage, uh, in, in these various salvage centers. I mean, it's still in the box, or, I mean, it's crazy. So, um, I know like, I have seen my parents get doors or, or even like full vanities and things for like 100 bucks, and, you're, and it's amazing. So there's no reason why I shouldn't switch this out. I can't obviously do it on my own. I've never switched out a door. And if you do it, I do know if you do it incorrectly, it will not open and close. And, and you'll have an issue with um, the efficiency. You don't want to have leaks around the door and, and stuff. Um, so that's definitely a job for my dad. I'll have to, I'm certain I'll have to get his help. But um, I've been looking at all the salvage shops that I really like. They have Facebook pages stuff and so I just gotta find the one I want and pick it up. I think I want to get one that's actually a set where it's the door integrated with the storm door and you just pop the whole thing in and, and screw it in and then you you know shim it up and screw it in and then ta-da you have a front door. And two if I do get a front door I wanna I do want to paint my front door red. I have a butter yellow cottage. What I want to do um and I have a brick colored roof. I did not pick that roof. It was on there when I bought it, but um, it's got like 20 years left in it, so unless there's a hailstorm, I'm not replacing it. So I gotta work with the colors that I was given. So a butter yellow cottage with like a brick brown and yellow, or not brown, uh, not yellow, brown and brick red shingled roof. So I was gonna pull the brown color out and I was going to paint my shutters like a bronzy color because I like more of grays and charcoals and, and the thing I like about bronze is it has the undertone of brown but the uh, but the bronze is closer to like the charcoals that I like so if I paint the shutters that color it'll be like a wooden shutter cottage with a bright red door and then and the red and the door will pull the red up the brick colored shingle so I can tie both in. But I was going to do that all this summer. If I buy the new door, I'll paint it before I actually put it in. I'm assuming that should be easier. Then, yeah. yeah. I've just got a lot of projects that I need to do around my house, which is um, exciting, but it's kind of a bummer when there's when it's so chilly and gloomy here and like it's just now 
5 o'clock and it's already, the sun is setting here. Winter, it gets so gloomy, so cold, it's so dark. And I want to say it's like 30 degrees, 20 degrees maybe, I don't know. It was snowing today, so. Which is why I have this huge coat on. But, um, now I have so many projects. I've got to get my house in order because when your house is in order, your mental health is better. And I really, really, really need to organize my kitchen. I have the smallest amount of cabinet space. I live in the country, which means I have big yards, mature trees, and, um, you know, a lot of extra living space that people in the city just don't have the luxury to have. But somehow, my house has the tiniest bathroom and the tiniest kitchen. My bathroom is so tiny that my guest room is accommodating a like full-sized vanity because I have to get I have to get all of my product stored somewhere. So I have a vanity in my guest room that is where I get ready in the morning, do my hair, do my makeup. Um, and then my bathroom is literally brush your teeth, shower. That's it. So um, but yeah, my kitchen, I gotta, I don't even know how to organize. The, the, the dilemma with my kitchen cabinets is, like, the bottom cabinets are tall enough for, for a counter, you know, you put a cap, like, bottom cabinets are, what, 48 inches, 42 inches tall, and then there's, your kitchen counter goes on top, but usually in bottom cabinets, there's, like, shelves or drawers or something, but mine are just full-size cabinets, and so you can't, like, stack or organize things well so I, it's like I need to put in organizers which I don't know where to get those yeah I don't know I'm, I wonder if they'd have any of that stuff at the retail like the uh, the the outlet places that I was talking about what did I call them centers um, there, and if you shop there, it helps have that free humanity, so I, I do love shopping there. But, um, yeah. Anyway. I need to, there's so many things I need to do. Um, oh, I was going to tell you, I am reading this awesome new book. I forget what it's called. It's You're a Badass, I think. And, uh, actually, I downloaded the audiobook. I really like it. I... It's amazing how aware of your negative self-talk you become when you start reading or listening to, like, self-help. Like, even just go to YouTube and change, just, like, Google self-help or, like, motivational. And, like, it can change your mood for the whole day, but it will, like, it will, like, um flow over into the next day or the whole rest of your week because I've been feeling like sad and gloomy because I do suffer from, I was diagnosed with depression, major depressive disorder when I was younger. I do not take medication for it anymore because I, for the most part, it's um, been fine, manageable, um, but winter, it's terrible. It's awful. I get into a real funk. Um, my friends said something about take vitamin D pills, and then there's the there's some kind of light, which I saw Gab on Gabby Hanna's channel. She tried one of those lights that you like sit in front of, but she didn't like it because I was halfway considering it, but she didn't like it. So I'm like, I don't want to waste my money. So, but maybe I should try it anyway. I don't know. But another lady in my office is gonna try it, so I'll ask her how it, how it works for her. And two, apparently, it does matter which kind of light you get. I guess there, there's not just some happiness light that you park in front of your face and then you're like magically relieved of your seasonal affective disorder. I guess there are like specific ones and I wonder if it matters. Um, I wonder if it matters the person. I don't know. But um, I'll have to keep you posted on that. Uh, God, I don't even know where I was going. I am so distracted today. I'm having a real hard time. I gotta go get gas because my uh, 
Gaslight just came on, and if I'm being honest, there is no way that I'm leaving enough time in the morning to go get it. And I'm probably not going to go back out tonight. I'll probably go home, make dinner, um, start on that clothing nonsense that I really don't want to do, and then just stay in for the rest of the night. And then, after I get the clothing stuff done, then I will probably try to organize my Christmas stuff and put that away. Um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. And you know what will actually probably happen? I will probably get home and then I will take off my shoes and then I will say, I'll do it tomorrow. Probably. But I'm going to get out and pump some gas. You want to go with me? We'll see. Let's, I've got to check Yes, Juliet, Dude, I've had emo songs stuck in my head the whole day. So. I don't know why this isn't working. Damn it. Let's do it. Oh, I gotta go in. Wait there. All right, guys, I got gas. I'm freezing my tukus off. Oh my gosh, it's 23 degrees outside, but Indiana, um, in case you've never been here, only has, like, wide open fields and cows. Okay, it's not that bad, but might as well be, I'm telling you. But there's this wind that whips through everything, like, even the little, these little towns. It just cuts through, and even though it might be 23 degrees outside, it feels like it's negative. Like, my fingers are so cold. This is a good reason to have a boyfriend because if he's a good one, work dating, he'd be like my dad. My dad does not let, if you're in a car with my dad and you pump your own gas, then the apocalypse has happened because he is just like that. He just doesn't want his girls having the smell of gas on their hands. Um, yeah, so he always does it for us, even if we're older and we've been driving for years and we're out of the house and yeah if he's in the car with us he will pump the gas i think that's so sweet so no wonder i'm spoiled i went from like when i was in my 20s because i was adopted when i was a teen i mentioned that in the last video but when i was in my 20s there was a lot of crap i was still working through from my childhood so i went from like no standards and like no self-esteem to now i'm i'm, I'm older and I, I do have standards and self-esteem i was I was joking, it occurred to me earlier that um, they told me I could be anything I wanted when I grew up, and I didn't believe it, so I was like a low self-esteem hoback, so what, then what I've decided was that I'm a hoback with self-esteem now, because I can't change my past. I'm, I'm done with my hoeing days, though, but I do, <laughs> I do, uh, I do now have a uh, self-esteem and standards so that's probably what changed that because it's just not worth it it's really not like, like okay you think about it this way you only have so much time in a day and you could be uh, chasing your dreams you could be making your own life better you could be spending your time and your money and your energy on yourself or you could be wasting it on these guys that don't matter that aren't going to help add value to your future and that's just kind of how I look at it now like they don't if they're if they're not adding to my life then I'm not wasting my time my energy or my money on them um so yeah no standards to high standards before I was like oh he pays attention to me he's good enough so girls out there if you're listening uh and you feel like, oh, you, you're petrified to be alone? Girl, so was I. Because I grew up with a mom who, um, my biological mom, she was a stripper until the end. Then 
afterward, you know, she, she just went through men one right after the other. Not that that's the case for anybody who strips. It's just that was the case for my mom. Some of those ladies are super independent and super, um, you know, girl power. But that was not the case for my mom. My mom just needed to be validated by men. And uh, so till the day she died, she just went through terrible, awful men. And I think you know, as much as I was like, I'm never going to be like that. I did go through that phase and I wanted to be validated by men. And what I realized was that that was the worst thing I could have done to myself. What, um, and I think I did it because I was absolutely terrified of being alone, terrified. And here's what I've realized, and this is going to sound crazy, but the thing that you're most afraid of is probably going to be the most amazing thing that you do in your life. If you face it, if you do it, it's going to be the most amazing thing that you ever do in your life. And even like in my last relationship, there were things like we did not see eye to eye. Like I did become independent. I got my own place. I paid my own bills. I worked hard and I didn't have any kind of boyfriend, but then I, even in my last relationship, like when we got in it, there'd be things that we like wouldn't see eye to eye about. And it wasn't just little things where somebody could compromise. There'd be like some big things. Um, where I was like, you know, that's just not something I value. You're more than welcome to live your life in that way. Um, but you're just, I'm not going to be a part of it. Like, and I was comfortable saying that where before when I was terrified of being alone, I'd be like, I would like bend and give in on things that I really didn't want to give in. And that should have been deal breakers for me. But, um, but they weren't, but this last relationship, I was literally like, you know, this is what I want for my life. These are the deal breakers. And, and if, you know, they're something that you can't live without or you don't want to, um, change or, or, or something that you're comfortable with, then we're just not compatible. That's just not a huge deal. I mean, it's not the end of the world. And I would, and I would like when things would come up that were definite deal breakers for me and I would just let them know. I'd be like, you are more than welcome to live your life any way you want to, but you're just not, I'm not going to be, um, comfortable being a part of that life. Cause I just don't want that stuff in my life. And so, and, um, and yeah, and he respected me and honored me and he never like pushed me on any of those things. And, and some of the things that we were like, like I would say are not important in my life. He, he was the type of guy who was like, well, it's not, important enough and part of my life that I'm willing to lose you. So, so for a long time it did work, but then, um, yeah, it turns out that guy was like, not even the person that I thought he was, you know, so I fell for a guy that didn't actually exist. Um, and that's the guy that reached out to me over Christmas. Boy, that was a nightmare. Um, but anyway, I'm home. My point here is if you're terrified to be alone, that's exactly what you need to do. Uh, and I guarantee you, you will see the world differently and you will be so proud of yourself. You will be so proud of yourself because once you see it from the other side and that being single and independent and doing things on your own, you'll, it's hard to go back. It really is because this life is amazing and, and you only get one and you shouldn't waste it on anything that's not true to who you are. And that includes boyfriends, you know, girlfriends, whatever your preference is. Um, just, yeah, you get to make it what you want and, and constantly settling is never going to give you what you want. Anyway, I say this every time, but you should know that you are loved. And I say it every time because it's absolutely true. Know that you're loved. Know that you matter. And um, I hope you join me again. I know I'm super long-winded, but I have so many things that happen in my brain. Anyway, see you next time.